The good old air puff test. This is probably the most memorable and the most dreaded part about getting an eye exam. And in this video, I'm gonna go over exactly why eye doctors do the air puff test and also give you two alternatives, including my favorite that doesn't include any air and any eye drops. Let's focus in. Hey, howdy everybody, this is Dr. Neil Gaiman, Dr. Eye Guy, with the channel that keeps your eyes healthy and your vision clear. Now, the reason why eye doctors actually perform the air puff test is to measure your eye pressure, your intraocular pressure. The reason why this is so important is that we're screening for a disease called glaucoma. Irregular eye pressure can actually put a lot of stress on the optic nerve of the eye, causing damage to the nerve fibers, and that will cause peripheral blind spots, eventually tunnel vision, and could lead to blindness. In fact, glaucoma is one of the leading causes of blindness in the developed world. And that's why it's so important that eye doctors are checking your eye pressure every time you come in for an eye exam. And one of the most common eye pressure measurement tools out there is the air puff test. So I'm gonna go over exactly what the air puff test is and also the two alternatives, including my favorite. First one on the list is the famous air puff test. Real name for it is called a non-contact tenometer. Whereas the other tools actually make physical contact to the eye. They're actually pressing on the cornea to measure eye pressure. This one doesn't make physical contact. Instead, it uses a puff of air to measure the eye pressure. And this is done by measuring how much air pressure it takes to bend the cornea by a certain amount. The more air pressure it takes, the higher the eye pressure. The pros to the non-contact tonometer or NCT is that it can be a great screening tool. It provides quick, efficient, and fairly reliable results that can be done at a routine eye exam. The obvious downsides, the cons to the NCT is that people hate it. <laughs> It can be startling, jarring. Sometimes it can be tricky to obtain a pressure on young children because they might be afraid of it. And really the worst part about it is the anticipation, actually waiting for the air puff, knowing that the air puff is coming and just waiting for the air puff is probably the worst part. Another con is if you're actually squeezing your eyelids or holding your breath because you're nervous about getting the air puff, that can actually give us a false high reading for your eye pressure. The next one up is probably considered the gold standard of measuring eye pressure, and it's called the Goldman Applination Tonometer. This is likely considered one of the more accurate ways to measure eye pressure, and usually when people are talking about other eye pressure measuring tools, they usually compare the results of those with the results of this. Now this one does require contact to the cornea. You actually press this probe against the cornea and that pressure is neutralized to obtain the accurate eye pressure measurement. Now the pros here, if you're trained and skilled to use GAT, the results that you get can be really reliable and accurate with a large range of different eye pressures. Now definitely one of the cons, because you are touching the cornea, you do need to numb up the eye with a sodium fluorescein type of numbing eye drop in order to obtain the measurement. Another con is this can actually be a little bit nerve wracking to the patient as they watch that probe get closer and closer to their eye, knowing that it's actually gonna touch their eye can be a little bit worrisome to the patient. Also, you do need to use a slit lamp type of microscope to use GAT to obtain measurements. They also have a handheld version with the probe on there as well, but it can be a little bit tricky to use as a screening tool. Just really quick, for the statistics of this video, I measured my eye pressure 82 times for this video, for you. Next up on the list and my personal favorite is the eye care tonometer. Now this has a small magnetized probe and when activated, it will come out and tap the cornea and rebound back. And that's actually how it measures eye pressure. It measures how fast or how hard the rebound is. And so this is considered a rebound tonometer. Now here are the biggest pros to the eye care tonometer. You do not need any numbing eye drops at all. In fact, the probe is so small and so fast, people hardly even feel it. The best way I can describe it is it kind of feels like someone touches or brushes your eyelash. So you will blink, but you hardly feel anything touching your eye. In fact, some people are really shocked after we take the measurement and we tell them that it actually touched their eye. Some people don't even believe it. Another pro is that it doesn't use air, so you don't have the crazy anticipation of air puff or anything blowing in your eye. Another one is that you can obtain measurements really fast. You can get six measurements within seconds and that will provide a little bit more accuracy to the results. The results from the eye care tonometer are actually really reliable and can be fairly comparable to the results from GAT as well. One of the downsides is that it still has to be close to your eye and so you have to hold it really close to the patient's eye and you get inside that personal bubble so the patient can flinch and get a little bit worried. Also accuracy depends on how accurate or how centered you're hitting the cornea. If you're off a little bit, too high, too low, off to the left or right, that can influence or mess up the results a little bit and so you have to be perfectly centered 
hard and on target to obtain an accurate result. I'm curious to know in the comments, which one of these three or a different one did you have at your last eye exam? I'm Dr. Neil Guyman, Dr. Eye Guy. Stay focused. <laughs>